Jadev is back at it here to give everyone a Saw related video. So tonight I was finally able to go see a movie in the movie theater for the first time since January of 2020 when I saw Bad Boys for Life, which was actually really good, surprisingly. And tonight I was able to see Spiral from the Book of Saw. So since I've seen it, I think it's a great time to do my official Saw ranking all nine films that are in the Saw universe, of course, including Jigsaw and including Spiral from the Book of Saw. A few things I have to cover before I do that. First thing, I actually like all the movies in the Saw universe. Some obviously more than others, but there's no film that I absolutely can't stand in this particular franchise or series. Unlike some other franchises where there's a film or two that I can't stand, such as Seed of Chucky, Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, Halloween Resurrection, hell, you could even include Halloween Season of the Witch, which Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, which some people actually like, I can't stand it. So those films are absolutely terrible and the worst films of those particular franchises. But the Saw movies, I like all of them. Few I don't like as much, but I do like all these movies. And of course, this ranking is my ranking. Your ranking is going to be a lot different. There's a Saw film that I tend to like a lot more than other people. Actually, a few of them that a lot of people, from what I've seen in other YouTubers' comment sections, are ranked very low. So you're going to disagree with me. This is my opinion. It's not the best Saw movies of all time list. It's just my favorite Saw movies in order. So be aware of that. Please don't hate. Appreciate the fact that I'm doing this list. And make sure in the comments section that you leave your list. And show me how much you disagree with my particular ranking. It's going to happen. I'm just letting you know. Uh, of course, if you're a Saw fan, I would assume you've seen all these movies already. Make sure that you've seen Spyro before you watch this video. There's your warning, but I'm going to rank all nine Saw movies. So if you haven't seen Jigsaw, if you haven't seen Spyro, make sure you watch them before you do, or before you watch this video. So let's start this ranking video off. My least favorite Saw film coming in in ninth place is Saw 5. I don't hate the movie, but one of the things that really irritate me about this film is the tagline. You won't believe how it ends. That pissed me off once the movie was over. I'm like, really? That's how you're going to end the movie? So the whole ending of the movie, the twist, so to speak, is Strom had to go in this glass box to be okay since he didn't he got crushed with a moving wall different but not what i was expecting and not an ending that i would say you won't believe how it ends on the movie poster and cover boxes for the blu-ray or dvds so not my favorite i do like the strom character but him like going to these different crime scenes and like looking at things and just like putting pieces together and, and things together like that. He knows that Hoffman is an apprentice or an accomplice to Jigsaw kind of bothered me, but it was okay. The people involved in the trap in this film, which I don't remember any of the character names. I think I remember Julie Benz from Dexter. Um, but they were pointless. They had nothing to do with John Kramer, Jigsaw, Hoffman. Well, other than Hoffman put him in the trap. So that bothered me. Their story was irrelevant. I didn't care about any of those characters. So bad character development there, but I did like the Hoffman Strom thing. Jill Tuck had more of a role in this film, but it just wasn't the best Saw film, but I don't hate it. So Saw 5, Number nine, in addition to what I've already said about Saw 5, I forgot to mention the fact that I really like the pendulum trap with Seth in there, the guy that killed uh, Hoffman's sister. I thought that was really cool, and it's one of the few scenes that I kind of turn my head the other way when I watch it. Usually that stuff doesn't really bother me, but that kind of got to me a little bit, so just wanted to mention that. 
Number eight is going to be Jigsaw. I liked Jigsaw for the most part. I felt like the twist wasn't very good. It was okay. The character of Logan was decent. I mean, they had to do a lot of stuff to try to connect all the dots and make this stuff make sense. The continuity. And for the most part, it worked, but you would have saw him in a previous Saw movie, let's be honest. I wouldn't have greenlit this film they wanted to end it with Saw, the final chapter, and this wasn't supposed to happen. But I did like some of the, the traps in this film. I did like the character of Eleanor, and Logan was okay. Eleanor, I would have loved to see in another Saw film, which her character didn't have anything happen to her. So she could come back at some point, conceivably. Doubt it will happen, though, but kind of far-fetched, but a decent film. I kind of saw, you know... When the people were in the trap and watching the Billy the Puppet or seeing the Billy the Puppet and playing the tape recorder, when they didn't mention Jigsaw at all, I had a feeling, oh, this is gonna this is a trap that happened a long time ago, and that's how Jigsaw's in the film, and yep, that's what happened. So Saw eight, or Saw Saw eight, Jigsaw number eight. Number seven, here's where a lot of people are gonna disagree with me. I just watched all these films over again, too. Actually, to let you guys know, I've watched the first seven Saw movies at least four times each. Jigsaw, I've seen three times. Twice in the theater opening week. And once, uh, let's see here, two three days ago. And Spiral, I've only seen once so far. So, But my number seven film, which a lot of people really like this film, I don't. I mean, it's okay, but it's not my favorite, would be Saw 6. The character that the, the movie focuses on, William Easton, that's good. I, I don't like the twist of he's not in a game, but he was in a game, and it's the family of the... The person he rejected insurance of is the twist that they had to decide his fate. I didn't necessarily like that. It wasn't very mind-blowing compared to all the other Saw movies twists. It was a good Saw film, but we've seen that. It kind of reminded me of Saw 3 to a certain degree. I did like the character of Hoffman's evolution in this film Hoffman became a certifiable badass in this film with the when he kills Erickson. And another thing, they all of a sudden brought Agent Perez back when she got shot in the last movie. Granted, in Saw 5, you didn't see her die. She was in Strom's arms. And then all of a sudden she's back in this one and there's not like a mark on her from what I noticed. I don't know. You, you switch directors from David Hackle to uh, Kevin Gertwright. But I didn't necessarily like some of the things that they did in this movie it's still an enjoyable movie and a lot of people really have a lot of love for this saw film i like it but it's only my number seven i did like the end though with uh hoffman being in the the bear trap and then getting out of it and like his mouth is like apart or his jaws apart that was pretty cool i wasn't sure if we were going to see hoffman after that but he came back for saw the final chapter some people hate Hoffman's character. I actually enjoy like him. He's he's a badass. Especially this film. This film started like developing him really good. Five did a little bit, but six really made him like legit. So Saw Seven, I'm sorry, Saw Six is my number seven. One more thing about Saw Six. Yes, Agent Perez comes back in Saw Six to die. But we initially thought she died in Saw Four. Not Saw Five. Yes. I made an error. Number six on my list at the moment. I've only seen the film one time thus far, so give me a break if you're a really big fan of this. Spiral from the Booker Saw. It's kind of slow. It reminds me a lot of the original Saw film. Too much of... Chris Rock's character Zeke in this film 
I felt like there needed to be more characters that you got developed, in my opinion. And Samuel L. Jackson's character, Marcus, is barely in the film. He's in it for about five minutes total, maybe seven minutes total, it seems. He's not in it very long, even though, obviously, he gets top billing, or one of the top billings in the film. But it was okay. And maybe if I watch this film again, I might have a different take on it. The beginning, I fell asleep tonight in the theater. I don't remember how long it was. It might have been for like 5 to 10 minutes, maybe 15. I don't know what it is. It was just moving too slow for me. But I don't think I've ever fallen asleep during a Saw movie before. At least the first time watching it. But I did tonight for a little bit. So the twist, the first one, I saw coming well, pretty early on. There were lots of clues that pointed to that, so I saw that one. Now, the second twist was obvious to a certain degree, but I didn't see it happening like that, so that was okay, and it was good. I like how the film ended. It was decent for an ending, and obviously we have the prospects of a Saw 10 or Spiral, whatever they want to call it, to another film in the Saw universe at number 10, or 10th film, I should say, so that's okay. Um... But again, too much Chris Rock in this film and overacting was a problem from him at times. There was some good comedy, especially the part where he's talking about Forrest Gump at the beginning of the film. I remember that, but at a certain part, like I said, I I, uh, I went to sleep. When he borrows his phone to Shank to uh, do something and then he's like, don't you download any Twilight shit or whatever it was. That was pretty funny. But all in all, decent film. You know what? I just realized something. I haven't gave my score of the film. So let's backtrack a little bit. Sorry. Saw 5, I gave a 5.6 out of 10. Saw, or Jigsaw, number 8, I gave a 6.0 out of 10. Saw 6, I gave a 6.2 out of 10. And my score for Spiral, at the moment, I'm going to give it a 6.6 out of 10. That could go up, depending on how my second viewing is. I might see it in the theater again. Possibly tomorrow or this weekend, depending on how I feel. It's definitely a movie that I want to see again, obviously. And then, of course, I'll buy the the uh, 4K or Blu-ray of it to watch that and own it like I do all the other films. So, Spiral from the Book of Saw, at the moment, is my number six. Number five, this was probably one that I used to not like the most, but I actually moved it up my list upon my last rewatch of it, which was... Four days ago, three days ago, and that would be Saw 3. I didn't like the character of Jeff at all. I liked the character of Dr. Denlin or Lynn a lot. I found her character very calming in that, but Jeff's character... I don't know why, but he annoyed me a lot. Um, so that was my problem with him. I didn't like the fact that this guy is the guy that kills John Kramer. I did like the fact that they brought Detective Matthews back because there was no mention of him at all in advertisements and anything. I didn't expect to see him. And he even posted something uh, that he wouldn't be in the film or wrote something. On, I don't remember what it was, but he said he wasn't going to be in the film. And then Donnie Wahlberg was in the film for a little bit here and there, probably five to five minutes of screen time. It was nice to see him. I like Detective Matthews. If we do a Saw character ranking of all the characters in the Saw franchises, at least like my top 10, at the moment, I'm thinking Detective Matthews is probably my favorite Saw character. I like that character a lot. Um, Amanda was kind of annoying in this film to me. Uh, I didn't like that they killed Allison Carey off in this particular film. I thought they could have done a lot more with her character since she didn't really get a lot of time when she seemed to be like one of the smarter characters, but died with barely any screen time through the whole movies. I mean, she had a lot of time in Saw 2, but I felt like they could have used her character a lot more. And Dina Meyer, I've actually met. I've actually met Tobin Bell, too. Didn't actually talk to him at all, but I've seen him, I should say. Uh, Dina Meyer, I did meet. She was actually really in a conversation with Elizabeth Berkeley at a 
a horror movie convention that I went to, like her and Elizabeth Berkeley were really, really like into each other's conversation. Yes, Elizabeth Berkeley from Saved by the Bell and Showgirls. So that was my gripe. I didn't like that they killed Carrie off. It pissed me off. <sighs> Jigsaw dying. Him eating a tape was interesting. I did like the twist a little bit that, uh, you know, Jeff's daughter was hidden in the warehouse that they're in. I'm trying to think of anything else I'm leaving out of this. I feel like there's something I'm not mentioning, but I can't think of it at the moment. But that is why Saw 3 is number five. That probably used to be number, well, it used to be at the bottom of my list at one point because I just didn't like the character of Jeff. I don't know. If you're a fan of the character of Jeff, why don't you uh, leave a comment in the comment section in addition to your Saw ranking. My number four film, this is where people are going to flip their lid, throw shit. Obviously, you know it hasn't been mentioned yet. I like this movie. Obviously, it has flaws. But I just enjoy this and it's saw the final chapter. I admit it would have been a lot better if Dr. Gordon... Dr. Gordon would have only came back at the very end instead of being shown here and there in the movie. But I just enjoyed this movie. The cat and mouse stuff with uh, Hoffman and Jill Tuck. Hoffman going into fucking killer mode at the station when he kills like five people and then he kills Jill Tuck. That was awesome. Hoffman really... Some people hate Hoffman. I know Cody Leach hates Hoffman, another YouTuber. If you're not sure, of, or if you're not aware of Cody Leach, check out his channel. He's awesome. He hates that character. I like Hoffman. Initially, I didn't, but as soon as, like, toward the end of Saw 5 and Saw 6, Hoffman got, like, worthy of, like, good character in the Saw franchise, uh, in my opinion. So, um, I like the doc Dr. Gordon coming back was awesome. It would have been better if he would have came back at the very end as like this crazy twist. And actually, if you didn't know, they were initially going to do two movies to end the Saw franchise. The end of the seventh movie was going to have Dr. Gordon come back and then he would play a, a bigger role in the eighth movie. But then they just decided to scrap that and make it one big movie. Um, but Hoffman was good. Jill Tuck was okay. I didn't like the character of... Well, actually, let me rephrase that. The character of Gibson is this character out of nowhere that has this animosity with Hoffman and you think we would have saw him in a previous Saw film or they could have kept somebody else alive in a previous Saw film to have this animosity with Hoffman where you're trying to track down who's doing these murders and putting these traps out there. But um, they didn't. They just had this character Gibson, Gibson show up out of nowhere and then of course he dies. He didn't even really... I thought a character like him would have survived to the end, but he didn't. The part with Chester Bennington, rest in peace, Linkin Park, that was pretty cool, actually. His screaming when he's glued to the, the car or the seat of the car, that was pretty good. I like that. I'm trying to think of what else. I just watched this, but like watching them all the last week, they're kind of like all together in my head now. Um... Mm, I'm trying to remember. There obviously were supposed to be more accomplices to uh, Dr. Gordon. The two guys from the beginning of the film were supposed to be, were the guys that were in the pig mask, but they didn't get revealed. Mm, I guess it's kind of a plot hole because like, you want to know who these people are that helped him capture Hoffman. But I love the fact that they brought the bathroom back at the end of the movie. The bathroom is a classic set especially for this, well, that's the biggest set in this franchise, but having the bathroom come back, I would have liked to have seen an end of Hoffman's character, not just him in a room with Dr. Gordon saying, game over. It would have been nice to see him die or see him escape like Matt, like he's a badass like Detec Detective Matthews. So he probably would have, you know, dislocated his foot to get out of the shackle, most likely, but we don't know what happened to Hoffman. Maybe some Saw movie they'll answer that or some Spiral movie they'll answer that particular question. Who knows? But that's why I saw the final chapter is my number four film and I know you guys are going to disagree with me. I like it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. My score of that movie, by the way, is a 7.3 out of 10. And for Saw 3 that I just talked about, I don't know why I keep forgetting to name the scores. 
7.0 out of 10. Another thing to add about Saw, the final chapter, I was not, and I repeat, a not a big fan of the Bobby Dagan stuff. I found that really annoying, and his character just didn't interest me at all. Sorry to say, for those of you that like that stuff for that particular character, I couldn't stand him, and that's all I have to say about that. Number three, another pers another uh, film that you guys are going to disagree with me on. I like this film. I thought the twist was well. It well while it was predictable, it still like was epic in my opinion. And that was Saw Four. People think this is the biggest comedy of the Saw franchise. I don't know. Officer Rig going through these tests. Eh, wasn't that important they they should have built his character up a little bit more maybe had him be the focal point of saw five but he was supposed to be a big character in saw three but he was unavailable so they had him in there for a very limited time and then had him as the main focal point of saw four i like the fact that detective matthews was back they showed a little bit of his what happened to him after messing his foot up Hoffman pulls him into a room or well jigsaw helps too but uh you know he's getting attended to um he looks like shit he hasn't bathed he's eating yeah crappy food <laughs> pet food having friends of rats and that but I just I don't know saw four to me had some interesting things happen in it the ending while it was predictable it still caught me off guard I'm trying to remember I think, well, everybody knew that Hoffman was bad from the, was it Saw 2 or Saw 3 where he picks up like the ring and puts it in his pocket. So, but just to how it happened, I didn't think Detective Matthews was actually going to die. And that kind of caught me off guard. But Hoffman being in on it was something that I suspected. And then all these movies, of course, are giving you clues that Dr. Gordon is going to show up eventually. And that was the thing. Going back to Saw, the final chapter, I knew Dr. Gordon would come back eventually because they kept giving you little clues or mentioning his name in all the Saw movies. I'm like, it's going to end with him or we thought it was going to end with him uh, until they wanted to, they decided to want more money out of the franchise. But Saw 4, that's my number three. It is what it is. Another thing that I forgot to mention about Saw 4 that I really liked was the whole autopsy scene. That was really cool. Dr. Hebner doing the autopsy, finding the tape covered in wax that Jigsaw swallowed in Saw 3, and then Jigsaw says, you don't think you'll be tested. My work will continue. I think that was really cool. Uh, kind of set up the movie really well. And that's one of the reasons why I really like Saw 4. That scene was, was pretty cool, in my opinion. My number two. Now you're really going to disagree with me. Not as much, but... Some people would have these the way I have them. The original Saw from 2004. With a score of 8.2 out of 10. Like the new film Spiral from the book of Saw. Saw is very slow. But more interesting with Dr. Gordon and Adam. In all the backstory, you have this person, Zepp, who is played by Michael Emerson, who we think is the killer, but then we find out he's in a game of his own. You've got the other storyline with, uh, I'm just calling it storyline, other plot, with uh, Detective Tap and Detective Singh. I think Tap is one of the best characters in Saw, even though we only got him for one movie and a picture of him in Saw 5. Um... There's lots of little things that made this film more interesting. The acting isn't the best. I think Adam's character was terrible, especially when he's supposed to take the poison. I thought Dr. Gordon's daughter had bad acting. And uh, I think that's it for the bad acting. Of course, the ending twist, something I thought of, like, okay, this person is laying there in this room. We don't know anything about this character Something is going to happen with that body. But it still was awesome. I like how it ended. The 
whole Saw franchise really took off. I didn't expect there to even be a sequel, to be honest with you. But, uh, of course, we did get a sequel. Um, but Saw, Saw, even though like there's some bad acting, it had a lot of different things going on that made it a great film. And that's why I gave that an 8.2. And that's my number two. And, of course, by process of elimination, my favorite Saw movie is Saw 2. With a score of 8.7 out of 10, like I alluded to when I talked about Saw 3 and Saw 4, I really enjoy the character of Detective Matthews, played by Donnie Wahlberg. I thought his character was awesome. Now from Saw 1, where there's basically a focal point of Dr. Gordon and Adam, and then you have little plots around them, you have this house full of different characters, like Xavier, like Jonas, like Amanda... Like, um, oh, what's the, Obby or Obi, Obby, I don't remember his name, uh, Daniel Matthews and all these different characters. Like it was very interesting with all these characters. Xavier was awesome. He was a great character. You've got this, this house with nerve gas in it. So you've got to find this an adult and there's other characters, the two chicks. I'm trying to remember if I'm forgetting anybody else. The one guy that gets shot, just a really good movie. The twist, I didn't actually see coming. That was the one Saw movie that I recall that I didn't see that particular twist happening. First of all, if Matthews would have just talked to Jigsaw and talked and talked and talked, his son would have been in a safe place. Yep. And then Amanda being the the accomplice to Jigsaw is... Um, it seems obvious that that would be something that would happen, but I didn't see it coming with her getting thrown in the needle trap and her actually being a part of like the testing in this film. Well, she wasn't tested by Jigsaw, but people put her in the position where she was, you know, in, in danger, I guess you could say. Not a lot of danger, but um, that one threw me off guard. I did not see that happening. This was a, a well-crafted Saw movie. Now, you're, you may not, you know, you probably will disagree with me, but I think a lot of people would put this in their top four at least. Saw 2 is a good film, and uh, I'm glad that it's it's my favorite still. Uh, would have liked to have seen Detective Tap come back. That would have been cool, but you know he got his, he got uh, messed up a few times in the first Saw movie, but you didn't see him die. So I thought maybe he would come back. But Saw 2, great film. Great twist, in my opinion. I think the best twist of the Saw franchise. Well, of course, the original. But it was, in my opinion, obvious that that body was not going to be dead. Especially that they alluded to the fact that the one guy wasn't dead when he was just laying there when Amanda had to get uh, the key out of his stomach. So, that is my ranking of the Saw franchise. Again, Saw 5, it's 5.6 out of 10. Jigsaw, 6.0 out of 10. Saw 6, 6.2 out of 10. Spiral from the Book of Saw, 6.6 .6 out of 10. Saw 3, 7.0 out of 10. Saw, the final chapter. I know you're going to hate me for that one. 7.3 out of 10. Number 3, Saw 4, 7.7 .7 out of 10. Number 2, the original Saw, 8.2 out of 10. And Saw 2, number 1, with a score of 8.7 out of 10. So, again, what do you think of the Saw franchise? Give me your ranking. Tell me what you thought about Spiral from the Book of Saw. And again, my opinion could change on that film once I rewatch it. Um, but I think it was pretty solid. Uh, didn't have any big gripes about it. So make sure you leave your comment comments in the comment section. Smash the like button if you could. If you know anybody that would be interested in this, make sure you share it with them. And last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. Subscribe to the channel. Join the team. Show your damn support. And J-Dev will be back. Game over.